Hi, welcome to Accounting. Today we're going to talk about the allowance for doubtful or uncollectible accounts. The term doubtful or uncollectible can use, be used interchangeably. There are two methods that are generally used. Um, one is the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method um, involves just writing off accounts as they become uncollectible. There's no uh, matching principle involved and there's no estimation involved. The direct write-off method is not an acceptable method under generally accepted accounting principles, but it is the required method for the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, you'll use it for tax purposes, so you really have to be aware of both, purpose, uh, both methods. Um, the direct write-off method is uh, rather simple, so we're going to skip past it today. Please make sure you review your textbook. Uh, and we're going to focus on applying the allowance method. The allowance method involves estimation to try to um, decide, use an educated guess, about what accounts will become uncollectible in the future. And it utilizes the matching principle we want to recognize in the current period of when we were generating the revenue, the expense of granting credit sales. Because the thought is, if you're going to offer credit, it's to increase your sales and the cost of those uncollectible accounts, those people who aren't going to pay you, should be recognized in that same period as the revenue. And that requires an estimation, because if we knew who wasn't going to pay us, we obviously wouldn't grant them credit. So we're going to look at both ways. There's the income statement approach. The income statement approach focuses on bad debt expense. It focuses on uh, credit sales. Uh, the other approach is the balance sheet method, and we'll look at that one second. So first of all, I have just the facts here. So my, my facts are I have credit sales of $1,200,000. I have sales returns and allowances of, let me put a comma in there so we can read that appropriately, $20,000. I have a credit balance and the allowance for uncollectible accounts. And I have the information that management believes that 2% of all credit sales are uncollectible. And that's very common that management will make do some analysis. The analysis will be based on uh, market conditions, their industry, what's happening in their accounts receivable, and they'll make an estimation to what they believe is uncollectible. So the first thing we want to do is calculate net credit sales. So net credit sales is found by taking our credit sales less our sales returns and allowances. Remembering that sales returns and allowances is a contra revenue account that's used to collect returns and um, any discounts that are given to customers for defective or imperfect merchandise and that has a normal debit balance. So we would say here that it's equal to 1,200,000 minus the sales returns and allowances of $20,000. Our next step would be to apply this percentage that management believes is uncollectible. So we would say that our net credit sales times management's 0.02 or 2% will give us $23,600. So that's the amount that management believes in the future will become bad debt expense from people that do not pay on their credit sales. So our journal entry is a debit to uncollectible accounts expense or bad debt expense. You'll see both used. So they, they mean the same thing. Uncollectible accounts expense or bad debts expense will be our debit for $23,600. And then our credit is going to go to the allowance for uncollectible, you could also say doubtful. That's an older term that's used sometimes by people who have been in accounting for a long time. Allowance for uncollectible accounts. And we would credit that account for 23600 The allowance for uncollectible accounts is a contra asset. It goes with accounts receivable. It would have a normal credit balance. And we use it somewhat as a placeholder. We can't just write off accounts receivable because that accounts receivable is associated with a person. And then our subsidiary ledger of accounts receivable and our control account would not be in balance. And we want to make sure that 
anybody who has an account that we're keeping track of them even during the write-off process. So we use this allowance for uncollectible accounts sort of as a placeholder to keep track of what we think will be uncollectible in the future. So our journal entry is always a debit to expense and a credit to the Contra Asset Account Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts. And we had some more information here that there was already a credit balance in the Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts, but that information is not used under the Income Statement Approach. I put it there um, because sometimes that confuses students. It's often given in problems, but it is not used. It is not considered. Our focus is on the Income Statement side and bad debt expense for the Income Statement Approach. I'm going to take you to sheet two, and we're going to talk about the balance sheet approach. The balance sheet approach, instead of focusing on bad debt expense, uh, more focuses on getting the balance of accounts receivable completely correct. Because you remember that accounts receivable is an asset account, and the allowance account is a contra account that's meant to bring that account down to its realizable value. What we really think people are going to pay us is the net realizable value. And um, so the focus here is on the balance sheet rather than the income statement. You can see that I have some of the same information. I don't know if my, I didn't have accounts receivable on the other page, but I do I still have the credit balance and the allowance for uncollectible accounts. You can see my little positive sign here, my little negative sign there on the T indicating that it's the normal balance of $5,000 for the allowance for uncollectible accounts. So on this one, instead of focusing on credit sales, we focus on accounts receivable. So generally, management will apply a percentage that they think will be uncollectible to accounts receivable. Sometimes they'll apply to the whole balance of accounts receivable, but sometimes they'll apply to the aging of accounts receivable. So here's some information here that we have about the breakdown of accounts receivable, and this will help us to understand what's going to be uncollectible. So generally the older the account is, this account is past 90 days, the less likely it is going to be collected. If it's current, it's much more likely to be collected. So we'll take the balance in this bracket, the 0 to 30 days, and we will multiply it by our percent, 1 percent, and we get $9,000. And then we will do that for every bracket, we will multiply the amount in accounts receivable times the percent, and we'll get these different amounts. I'm going to go ahead and put our commas in so that we can read it clearly. Um, and then after we have aged every bracket, we need to add these brackets up. So I'm going to say 9,000, 10,000, 1,000, 2,500. I'm going to sum them and I'm going to get $23,000. And that $23,000 is what I call my target. This is what we want the balance in accounts allowance from collectible accounts to be at the end of our process. So we think that $23,000 is going to be uncollectible, and that's what we want to see here become the balance. I'll make a little line here, the balance and the allowance for uncollectible accounts. We want it to become $23,000. That's our target that we're trying to aim for. So when we're going to do our journal entry, remembering that we are still going to do the same journal entry, we're going to debit bad debt expense and credit the allowance for doubtful or uncollectible accounts that we need to calculate the amount that we're going to debit and credit and we want to get here. So if I already have $5,000 in the account, and that's probably left over from last year's estimate, and I need to get to $23,000, how much do I actually need to credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts to get to $23,000? Well, if I just credit it for $23,000, 5000 plus 23000 is going to give me 28000 So that's not going to get me to my target balance, which is where I'm trying to get to. I really just need to get to that 23000 So I need it to be less. So I'm going to say 5000 plus 22000 Oops, nope. That's not exactly right. So I'll just do it in here. 23000 minus 5,000. There we go. There's my 18,000. That makes more sense. 
is what I need because when I look, 5,000 credit plus an 18,000 credit is going to give me to my target what I calculated bad debt expense should be. So my journal entry is going to be a debit to bad debt expense for 23,000 and a credit to allowance for uncollectible accounts for 23,000. Oops. Come on, mouse. 23,000. And we're going to have a credit for 23000 So our journal entry will be in balance, a debit to bad debit expense, and a credit for allowance for uncollectible accounts for 23000 And this method is the balance sheet method. Either the balance sheet method or the income statement method are um, acceptable methods under generally accepted accounting principles. I hope you enjoyed this screencast and that it answered your questions about the allowance method. Have a great day.